All right, so let's make this smaller so I can see. So today we're gonna do the CSS for our application. And we're gonna do mobile first, which from here, it seems pretty simple, but we need to make it responsive. So when it switches to the desktop view, it kind of shifts over. And there's a two to column layout for both the image and the information. And then inside the information itself, there's also a two column layout, except it has a header and a footer that we have to take care of. In the mobile version, everything is just laid out in a single column, except for the border countries at the very bottom. So let's get started. Oh, it's ready. All right, we have a ways to go. I'm gonna first add a class here for a country. As mentioned, we need some containers, so I added a bunch of divs here where we're gonna add the content. The image is gonna go up here. Let's also take this H3, and I want that at the top of the country detail, which I misspelled. And in each of the country sections, we're gonna grab the corresponding paragraph tags. So the first one is gonna take everything up until capital. And that'll be here. And the rest of the paragraph tags will go in the second section. That'll go here. And I think I want another div inside of country info. And that's where we're gonna store the border country as buttons. What if I resize this? Is that good enough? Yeah, we'll try that. So let's open up our CSS. And let's add that root class, which is country. And I believe I want some padding around everything, so it should be one rem. Let's also add some default styles for the native elements. So in H3, we'll have padding top of two rem, and the paragraph will have half a rem top and bottom, and then zero on the sides. That looks a bit better. I want to do something with this button, so... But I also know that this button is styled similarly with the border countries. So I'm going to add a class here for the buttons and it'll be border none and font size of one rem. But for the native button itself, we want to get rid of the default styles. So let's add the spacing first and then add the theming of, of the button classes with the dark and light using the host context. Background color will reference the element and then text color will also reference the variable that we defined earlier for each theme. We'll also need to apply that style. So this button needs the class of button. And that looks about right. Um, uh, did we set up that global style of sh shadows yet? Yeah, we did. I'm going to apply that too. So in the button HTML, let's add shadow. And I'm going to check the light mode so I can see the shadow. This is uh, not exactly what we want. We want it to basically outline the button. So I'm gonna remove the offsets so we don't need the secondary shadow. And this needs to be a zero. I want the blur on the outside. Dude. So I'll do one pixel here. That's better. All right, back to the detail. Let's add the classes that we created using some SAS magic. So we'll prefix it with country. And then there's layout. Detail, info, and section. In terms of the mobile view, only section really needs styling, and it's mostly just spacing. So we'll add the padding there, but we do need to. Oh, you can't see this. All right, back here. Oh, wow. <laughs> but we do need to style the board countries, so let's do that. Unfortunately, it's not prefixed with country because I already named it, but we'll use board countries inside of the nesting just because. First, let's just add a little bit of margin. And I think we need to add class names to the border country stuff. So I want this paragraph to act as a title. So I'm going to get it outside of this div here. Because on this ng if div, I want to add a class here for border countries dash buttons. And the reason behind me keeping the border country prefix is so that in the SAS file, it'll be easier. The board countries itself is going to have the styling similar to the button. So we'll just add the classes of button and shadow. And while I'm here, I want this to link us to other detail pages. So it'll be border 
country dot name here. So we have a long ways to go for these, but it's a start. The container for all the buttons is dash buttons. And I want a grid layout, so I'm gonna do display grid here. And to match the wireframe, we're gonna have three columns of equal size, and that's what the one FR is. In CSS grids, that's that's the fractional unit. It's just taking the corresponding space. And then for rows, I want it to basically have the right height, so it's gonna be two rem here. I'm also gonna give spacing to the gaps. So it's clear to see the separation in between. Now the last thing is, I want to reference the item and they have the class name of buttons, which is convenient for us. But that's only so that we can center the text. Um, and line height is gonna match the row template, just so that it knows how to center it. So if we go back to the browser, I wonder if you can see this. Yep. There's three and he here they are. And also, if we click on them, since we add the router link, it should take us to another page. I didn't add the router link to this button yet, so we should do that too. So button needs the router link, and this just goes to slash. So this is basically the mobile view, and if we check the mobile view, it does look right. But now we need to add media queries so that it actually looks good in the desktop view. And if you remember in our style guide, the breakpoint is at 375. So in our detail component, we'll create a media query and the breakpoint is going to be 376. So everything below 376 is the styles that we've created so far. And I know that I want 5 rem as the padding here. The H3 is also going to change the font size in desktop view and it's going to increase to 1.5 rems. So the layout container, we actually want to use Flexbox so we can evenly space apart the image and also the details. And the image right now wants to take up 100%, but we actually want to change that so it takes up less than half. And I went with 40%. And with the image being 40%, the detail is going to have a width of 50, just so that we have that little separation in between that we don't have to fake with margin. So let's see how that is right now. It's about right. The last thing we need to do is evenly space apart the details or the information, whatever we called it. And we're basically going to do the same thing. And it looks like the board countries containers inside of this, which we don't actually want. We want it as a footer type thing. So we need to move that down. So this div. Closes here, I think. All right, that's, there we go. All right, so our detail page is done. Now we can move on to the home page. So the home page is going to be quite a bit easier because the country cards are exactly the same in design in both mobile and desktop view. And the only difference is the layout. We have one column in mobile, and then in desktop, we have a four column layout. So we'll just use CSS grid for that. I will make a note that the filtering options is gonna be a separate video since I don't wanna to jam too much into one video. So we'll start with the country card and let's see if we need any classes. Let's add a class to the outer div and this CSS is gonna be prefixed with country card and we can reuse the shadow class that we created for our global styles. So I think I'm gonna surround the image in a div and that'll be country card image. That way we can control the size of the image. And then all the text information will go into a separate div that will name country card info. All right, now CSS time. As mentioned, the root style is gonna be country card. And also we do know that we need to add the host context for both light and dark. This time I think we only need the background color because the text should be inheriting from the body itself. Now the country card itself has some rounded corners, so we'll add a border radius for that. And I believe it needs to be a font size of 15 pixels, where the H2 is actually 18 instead. We're gonna give some padding to 
h2 in the, in the paragraph tag, a little less than one rem, and the paragraph is going to have zero padding on the left and right, just so it's aligned with the header. Now let's dial the easy part, which is the info. You have two rem padding on top, 1.5 on the left and right, and then finally 2.5 on the bottom. And we can take a look at that now, and it's it looks like it's spaced pretty correct. Oh god, but we need to do something about this image here. Let's actually do that thing where I put it over here. Image. Let's first dial the raw image to have a width so it's fluid. So these flags are all going to be the same width or the same size. And the country card, we want to we want to give it an overflow of hidden, so we can see those rounded corners. Uh, you could barely see it with, without any margins. Uh, that's fine. I guess we could start styling the home. The home page is gonna be pretty easy. We only need one class name to style, and I'll just use country cards because why not? So let's add some spacing so we can actually see those rounded corners. So one rim on the sides. Now let's go with grids. We're giving a row gap, so then there's spacing in between items. And as mentioned, we need to add some columns. This time it's gonna be four columns with equal spacing. And let's also add some column gap. That looks pretty good. Also, padding on the sides differ from one rem to five rem according to the screen size. Now we need to work on the images because some of these flags have varying heights and that's giving these cards varying sizes. So we're going to go back to our country card and I think instead of width here, uh, let me resize this. You know what, let me just move this out. So for image, instead of width, we're going to set the height to be a specific height and let's see if that does anything uh is weird looking all right we're gonna do the that trick so we're gonna do position relative here and position absolute here and we're gonna center the image using a transform where you transform 50 percent in both x and y direction and we set the the top and left at the center point so it's going to center it despite the size of the image and just in case, we're also going to give the container 200 pixels, so the heights match. And now this is what you see. Heights are a little strange, but that's okay. Because what we're going to do is, instead of, we're going to go back to width, actually, to 100%. And then we're going to hide anything that's outer, out of those bounds. So we'll add a overflow hidden here. And back in the browser, everything looks pretty correct but if we inspect the image here you'll see that some of these images are out are bigger than their container and that's to kind of make these look a little more uniform for example american samoa here is just within bounds whereas right next to it andorra is like definitely a bigger flag and then let's also check the mobile view, which looks perfect. So that's where I'm going to end this video. We styled both the home page and the detail page, and it looked pretty good. The filters are missing at this moment, but I want to save that for another video since that's going to require some feature work since we'll be updating interactions with our application. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Consider subscribing if you haven't, and I'll see all of you next time.